How's everything going today guys? My name is Copycat and in this video I'll be showing you all 15 different ways to use thwomps in Super Mario Maker 2. The first and most obvious way to use a thwomp is the way it was intended to be used in the original Mario games as an enemy. Thwomps have always been able to move vertically and horizontally, with the only difference throughout the years being how Mario is affected by them. In the Super Mario Bros. and Super Mario Bros. 3 game styles, if Mario touches or is touched by any part of the Thwomp at all, he will take damage or be killed. In the Super Mario World and New Super Mario Bros. style, Mario has a spin jump that allows him to hit the top of the Thwomp and jump off it without taking any damage. However, things are completely different in the 3D World game style and Thwomps act more like they do in the 3D Mario games. Mario now doesn't take any damage if he touches the Thromp's side or top, and can only be harmed if smushed by it. This leads to many cool new mechanics, especially our next way to use a Thromp, which is... Like I said, because you don't take damage from the Thromp in the 3D World game style, it can be now used as a way to travel vertically or horizontally in a course. In the Super Mario World and New Super Mario Bros. game styles, Mario can use a spin jump ability to constantly hit the Thromp's head, which actually allows him to move with it. Mario's spin jump move can be a bit tricky, but when you get used to it, it can be a good tool to get around a difficult course. Because you can't touch the sides of the Thwomp in the 3D World game style, you can also use it as a wall jump from one to another. Adding this feature to your level does add a little interesting puzzle as it makes things a bit more difficult, but of course this doesn't really work at all in the other game styles. With the introduction of the Dry Bone Shell in Super Mario Maker 2, Mario can actually use it to become impervious to enemies attacking from below. The shell will also protect you from lava and poison. Now because it does protect you from enemies from below, you can actually use it to ride on top of a thwomp. Another cool mechanic you can use with the thwomp is its ability to smash through certain types of blocks. As its regular size, thwomps can only break through normal blocks and cloud blocks. However, if it's powered up, it can also break through ice blocks, question mark blocks, and hard blocks. For both sizes, donut blocks react the exact same. Using this brick breaker knowledge to your advantage is key to adding interesting and suspenseful action to your course. One of the best new additions to Super Mario Maker 2 has to be the on-off switch that toggles bricks solid or dotted, tracks up or down, and conveyor belts left or right. Since speedrunning courses are so popular in Super Mario Maker, people have come up with ingenious ways to use these switches in combination with the thwomps. This looks extremely cool, as you can't really see the thwomps as they're just above you off screen, triggering the switches and giving the illusion that you're about to hit a solid wall. Mario actually has two hat options that both affect the thwomp differently. The first is the Buzzy Beetle, which only protects him from the thwomp, knocking it back up ever so slightly. This could be used with the help of some semi-solid platforms as a puzzle, with Mario having to hit the thwomp higher so it could horizontally trigger a switch. The next hat Mario could wear is the Spawny, which is way more protective of Mario and actually kills the thwomp in one hit. There is one more power-up feature that you can add to the thwomp, and that's giving them wings to fly. Now this makes them even scarier, as they still want to squish Mario, just now they can move left or right and chase him. I'm not sure how else you would use this on a thwomp other than an opposing threat, so let me know in the comments below if you have any other ideas. Believe it or not, there's actually one really other interesting way that you can get a thwomp to fly, and use it to your advantage. Now I showed you guys this glitch in my last video, every glitch in Super Mario Maker 2, and the idea is to place a beetle shell in front of a thwomp so it has to push it, and place a note block on the ground somewhere where both of these things will come in contact with it. For some unknown reason, this causes the thwomp to start behaving crazy, and it begins to fly diagonally through the sky. With the right setup, you can actually get it to fly vertically, which means Mario can use it as pretty much an elevator. Now there is one other major glitch you can do with the Thwomp, and that's using it to launch Mario across the map. The idea is to set up the exclamation mark box in a certain way so that when the Thwomp hits it, and Mario is about to run off the Thwomp, it will give an extra boost out of nowhere, sending him flying. This could be used as a really cool feature in a course, just as long as Nintendo doesn't find out that you're glitching and actually just removes your level altogether. When Thwomps interact with certain power-ups, items, enemies, and gizmos, they don't actually destroy them. Instead, the Thwomp pushes that thing along in its direction towards Mario. You can also use the top of the Thwomp to transport enemies. 
I've seen this used most effectively in puzzle courses, but it also could be used in some interesting ways in speedruns. Even though we've talked about what happens with bombs when stuff interacts with them, we haven't really talked about what happens when they interact with other enemies. Bombs are actually so powerful they can kill pretty much every single one. This includes spike tops, bomb bombs, dry bones, Bowser, etc, etc, etc. Although they just don't want to seem to interact with certain enemies like bonsai bills, boos, and oddly enough bloopers. Against munches literally nothing at all happens, which is why you can set up really elaborate puzzles like this one. Now up until this point I've been talking about how Thwomps can interact with items, enemies, power-ups, and gizmos to be used in various puzzles, but we haven't talked about one really interesting way the Thwomp itself can be used as a puzzle. Now after playing the course Stone Age by Leah96, I wondered how exactly she was able to get the Thwomp to move vertically and horizontally following Mario. This is actually something people struggle with in the first Super Mario Maker game as they came up with some ingenious ideas to get the Thwomp to move. However, in Super Mario Maker 2, it's actually extremely easy to do this, so let me explain how. The reason this puzzle works is because during night mode, in the ground theme, enemies actually float a bit, allowing the Thwomp to do the same, and now has the mechanic to follow Mario. I'm not 100% sure why this happens, and it is extremely strange, and Nintendo never really explained, apart from Goombas, how different things are affected by night, so it's up to people like myself to try to figure it out for you guys. Alright, so that's going to be it for today's video guys, I really hope you did enjoy this one. If you did, please leave a like, comment below what you thought about this video and if I left anything out, and of course subscribe to my channel. I also made a level for you guys involving thwomps and switches for you guys to try out which is really cool, so just check it out right here on the screen. And I hope you guys all have a good day and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!